CCR TV is happy to have with us today at Utopia Ms. Chloe Charlene Fernandez. Chloe Fernandez is an archer who plays at the national level and we in Goa are proud of her. Chloe is from Vasco and initially trained in Goa. She has put in a lot of hard work and effort in getting to where she is. CCR TV is privileged to have her with us today. An apple, shiny, juicy, sweet, etc, etc. We are not here to speak about the qualities of an apple, although there is a legend linked to it. William Tell of Uri was dragged before Jessler, who ordered an apple be placed on the head of his son and told the farmer that if he failed to shoot it off with a single arrow at a distance of 120 paces, both he and the boy would be put to death. Can you imagine? Well, I believe that's an old story. You know, archery is one of the oldest arts still practiced today. It probably dates back to the Stone Age. The earliest people known to have regularly used bows and arrows were the ancient Egyptians, who adopted archery for hunting and warfare. But today we have with us someone who is neither ancient nor Egyptian, Chloe Fernandez. I'm Mystica Denise, and if you were hoping that I keep this apple on my head and she shoots it, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that will not be happening today. So let's start right from the beginning. What made you get into archery out of all other sports? So I've been inclined towards sports since I was a kid and I always knew I wanted to be a sports person. So when I was young, my parents uh, put me into a lot of sports. So I did football, badminton, table tennis, swimming, but I just couldn't stick with any of them. So one day this family friend of ours informed us that they were going to have a demonstration, archery demonstration at Panjim and we happened to be there. So we went to check it out and I was so fascinated by the sport that I attended the next summer camp that they held and from then it was no looking back. So they just, they, do they take anybody or are there certain qualities required? To no, an anybody can be an archer, you just need to be like determined and yeah that's it. So then, what's the first thing they taught you when you joined RTD? So the first thing that they taught us was how to draw the bow. We had these elastic rubber bands, long ones, that we used to use every day for hours and hours to train with before we could actually go to the bow. And the first thing that they taught us was how to keep our hands straight because everybody's hand is usually like this. But for an archer, it has to be this way. But the palm has to be facing straight also. So that was... A lot. It took a lot of time, like six months, except, and that was the first thing. Yeah. So after six months, you started with an actual actually bow. shooting. Yeah. Tell me about the first bow you used. The first bow that I used was a, an Indian bow. It was a wooden one that I used for about five or six years. So I attended many nationals with that bow in that category. So, yeah. Explain to me the steps you go through in your head to actually shoot the arrow. There are too many steps to go into. So basically, we put on a uniform and um, we have our quiver ready, our equipment and everything. So then we hold the bow, we grip it. We mentally prepare for what we are about to do. Uh, like we have to go onto the shooting line and you have to prepare. Like I'm going to shoot the shot this way and hope and pray for the best and uh, if the shot is perfect then the arrow will go in the yellow in the bullseye so there's a lot of things that go into consideration because we have to take into uh, factor the environment the weather conditions etc so do you go through a lot of bows when you train or do you just like stick with one we try to stick with one bow but if that's not working for you if you're not improving then we try to upgrade like from the Indian, in the Indian category, I had around four bows in the span of five or six years. So we, sometimes the, the Indian bows tend to uh, break because they're made of bamboo and wood, right? So they get cracked because of the extreme temperatures, etc. And so that's why you have to keep upgrading it. How often does it take for you to adjust to a new bow? Um, 
Indian bows are a little easier, but the carbon fiber ones, uh, I think about six, four to six months to be completely set in the new bow, in the new bow, yeah. How much does it cost, this Indian bow? The Indian bow, I'd say maximum 10 or 20,000. And there are more types of bows? Yeah, so there are three categories basically. Uh, there are two carbon fiber ones. One is the recurve bow, the one that I shoot. And there's a compound bow, which is like a smaller version with three strings. And then we have the Indian bow, the, the wooden bow. And the price difference between these is a lot? Is vastly different. The two carbon fiber bows are around, the base models start at around 1 lakh and go up to 2.5 lakhs. Are there like different kinds of arrows that certain people prefer maybe a certain type of arrow are more comfortable with? Yeah, so the Indian bow, we have wooden arrows, bamboo arrows. We can't use any other type of arrows for the Indian bow. Uh, but for the carbon fiber bows, we have aluminum arrows and uh, carbon fiber ones. And there are many categories in the carbon fiber range also that differ uh, in their properties and price range. So speaking of comfort, how do you have to dress when you're actually like in... Mm -hmm. uh, Basically what I'm wearing now is what I would wear when I'm shooting because there's nothing interfering because sometimes when we're shooting the string tends to um, touch the cloth, uh, material and then the arrows will go haywire. So basically something that's fitting but not too loose. So tell me about your diet. Do archers have a certain kind of diet? We don't have a specific diet, but we try to get in a lot of proteins and fruits and pulses because we are in the sun the whole day and so we have to keep ourselves really hydrated, otherwise we won't be able to shoot that long. Do you spend additional time training in a gym? Yes, uh, every almost every day or if not at least four times a week, uh, maybe one and a half hour in the gym. Yeah. What do you do in the gym, like cardio or strength training? A lot of cardio is needed because we need to maintain our breath while shooting. Like I had a problem with controlling my breath that I used to get really nervous while shooting. So you have to so hold your breath when you... No, shooting? it has to be really... Uh, your heartbeat steady. has to be steady, yeah, stable. Some people do hold their breath but um, I don't think that works out in the long run. So then I started doing like a lot of cardio and strength training and resistance training and just working out in the gym a lot so then your body gets used to that kind of pressure right so then that helped a lot so would you say that archery requires more flexibility rather than muscle or both we don't really need flexibility as such like everybody has a certain kind of draw it's like a natural thing it's different for each person so with me i know exactly um, how much to draw and where to stop so basically we need the muscle strength and your muscle memory has to be good for our back muscles and shoulder muscles to move. So that's what I had to work on, like my back muscles remembering when to contract and when to release the arrow etc. How many hours a day do you spend training? Um, at the most 6 to 7 hours a day. While we're on the topic of physique, mm -hmm. what should your posture look like? So uh, we try to align our feet with our shoulders and we stand straight basically and it depends if you're a righty or a lefty. So I'm a righty so we keep our hand this way and then we lift it up and shoot basically that's how it is. We try to maintain this line, our hand should be in a line. Tell me one important lesson you've learned through archery in your life. Uh, through archery I learned that almost anything is possible because through all the competitions that I attended, there were experienced archers who didn't do so well and like the underdogs who won. So basically at, at the competitions, anything is possible because it depends on the way you're shooting that day and the weather conditions and so many other things come into factor over there. And also archery helped me become a little more serene because of all the mental training that we do. We do yoga and when we are shooting we are really focused and in control and so it really helped me uh, change, it helped change the way I think a bit a little more positively and calmly. 
so when we are shooting right the arrow has to, my, in my category the arrow has to travel a distance of 70 meters that's the distance that we shoot and especially for the indian bow it makes a huge difference because the arrows are really light at least the carbon fiber ones have more precision and they'll travel a little faster but in the indian bow if there's wind then the arrow will move a little to the side and then you won't hit the bull's eye so um, we have to adjust our aim accordingly and the target now is that what is called a target yeah a target. so is that kept like at different distances for, for different, different events? categories yeah so before we had like four category four distances in each event but then they changed it so now we just have one distance like in the recurve category that's my category it's 70 meters then in the compound the other carbon fiber bow it's 50 meters and in indian they have uh, many dif- uh, distances based on the category so the maximum they shoot in uh, in indian is 50 meters do yes. you think archery is an underrated sport compared to more popular sports like maybe badminton or football i definitely think it is underrated because we've been competing at international events since the 1990s i believe and we still like some of the medalists still haven't got the recognition that they deserve and even right now we have sub juniors and juniors winning medals at international levels and still nobody knows about them like very only people in the archery circle will know about them that's it so i'm guessing you have a couple of friends that are not into archery yeah i do i do what yeah. is one thing that they assume or um guess about archery or archers that annoys you that maybe like a lot of people think archery is really simple and easy because it's when you're looking at it it seems like we're not doing anything everybody says oh you're just standing there and shooting how difficult can it be but they don't just because we're not running or sweating that much doesn't mean we're not using every muscle in our body like every muscle from our toes till our like head um eyes are used right and for each arrow that i shoot i draw about um 18 kilos so for each arrow that's like that much resistance and it's really exhausting because it's also like mentally we have to focus a lot and um, there's so many components to take into consideration so we have to remember each and every one and each and every step and go through that for every arrow Do you train alongside other people or are you like training personally? No, at my ground back in Patiala, that's where I'm training. We have around 50 to 60 archers and two coaches. So I train with a lot of people and that way I think it helps when you go for competitions. It gives you a little more experience and so you're not so worried about shooting with other people. Do you think that you will be doing this till people start telling you go home and spend more time with your grandchildren or do you have a certain age where you decide like you'll put your bow away now? I haven't really decided on that but archery is a sport that we can play till we retire. There's no age limit for archery so I might just be doing that for a very long time or if I don't get to a certain level I might choose another career option. We were speaking the other day and you told me that you took a break for 3 years to finish mm-hmm. your studies. Yeah. So what have, what did you take? What did you study for? I did my graduation at Chogle College. I graduated in history and psychology. So did archery help you get into college? Um not really. I have always maintained good grades, but it was definitely like an added Uh, advantage like when i joined chogles they immediately asked me if i wanted to be the chairperson sports for the sports council and then uh, i we almost started like an archery club at chogles so that's always given me a little edge over others yeah how did you get back up on your feet after 3 years cuz 3 years is no joke <laughs> yeah i actually got right back into it i did not take it slowly so that was Uh, in hindsight not the best decision because when i just jumped right back into it i developed a couple of injuries so i if anybody else wants to take a break and then start um i'd say just take it really slow for like 6 months and then get back into the groove of your training etc yeah um lastly what would you like to say to anyone who wants to get into archery like some advice you have to be ready for 
disappointment and hurdles because there will be like a lot of it and you'll have to train consistently every day for a number of hours and even then sometimes you might not do that well in competitions but always go for them and because at each competition you learn something new that's what I did I just keep going for as many competitions as I can because we keep having new experiences and meeting new people and then they'll tell you how they train or if they do something a little different and so yeah just be prepared and uh, it's completely worth it because there's nothing like going out there and shooting and the thrill of shooting well and uh, shooting in the bullseye every single time there's nothing compared to that so, yeah. there's not a lot of places where you can learn actually in Goa because it's not no, very popular it's so you just, know any place you can just recommend? just two places in Vasco in Chikalim and in Ponda that's it and is training expensive taking up a coach uh, we have state appointed coaches, so you don't really need like a personal coach unless that's what you want. Then I'm not too sure how much. So if is. you have like a coach with a bunch of other people, then it's not expensive. But if you choose yeah. to have a personal coach, then you I have to shell out a bit. You haven't turned with a personal coach? No. Okay. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure having you here. And thank you at home for watching CCR TV. This has been Utopia. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start assembling my bow now. This is a recurve bow. Um, this is the handle and it has many um, components and accessories. So the clicker. And this is the area where the sight's going to go. And this is the extension. So I'm going to start with the stabilizer. Assembling the stabilizer. Yeah, so now we also have two side extensions, uh, uh, stabilizers, the short ones. Okay, so now we're going to fix the side. And this is what we use to aim. These are the limbs and we're going to start with the lower limb. This is the string that's going to go from limb to limb. So that's pretty much it. Um, this is the quiver and these are the arrows. So I can explain one arrow. This is the knock. So we knock it in here like this. And then we use the finger tab to like grip it and pull. So that's basically the bow. <laughs> 